Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here. Welcome back to Talk the World. This is the 28th installment. And before we get right into your responses, any questions you may have had, if you haven't seen any of the other 27 installments, then why not go check them out? There is going to be a link in the description of this video for the last Talk the Wall. Or alternatively, if you like to see the playlist, then click the I button and there'll be a link there. So you click that and you can catch up with everything you have missed. But as always, if you have any questions or opinions, do feel free to put them in the comments section of this video because I want to Millwall voice for out and also while you're down there don't forget to put your score predictions for the big derby game against Cholton Athletic which is obviously at the valley in the comments section and add your opinions on what you felt went right and wrong in that match now do bear in mind I recorded this talk the wall on a Monday so if anything has become outdated or if any new new stories have appeared and I'll cover them next week Onto your predictions, and no one got the score prediction right. But to be honest, who would have expected this scoreline? I mean, seriously, if you're telling me you had, I'd be very, very surprised. I mean, 3 0 against Bournemouth, really? Would you have expected that? And so I'm going to start with a few that didn't give Mill the chance with their prediction. The first was the Veggie Tube. He said that the Lions would lose 5 0, but I think he really did expect the Cherries to come down with a full strength squad with your Jack Wilshires, your Callum Wilson, and then you've got Harry Arta, all their key midfield players, key strikers and all their important players in that team. However, Wilson did come down to the den but he came on as a substitute and just couldn't make the difference. The next scoreline was a pretty popular scoreline with it saying that it finished 3-1 to Bournemouth and two people said that. They were Talk Gillingham and Ray Narration. Now they both said something and I'm going to start with what Talk Gillingham said and he said thank you for putting my bit in here. So can I just say a thank you to him for giving his opinion on the game I thought that was really good and it actually was a really good section to use in the podcast and I'm going to use this just to say a couple of things the first is if you support another club let me know because then if we do play then I can kind of add a section in the podcast just dedicated to your opinion on what you felt went right with the game and also just tell me if you support another club I mean talk Gillingham is pretty simple that he supports Gillingham because he's talking about them but you know it's just those sort of things I like to have other supporters here it's good to have a different view now Ray narration said that he thought the game would be a tough challenge against a decent Premier League team and he's wishing the boys luck though and he finished with come on you Lions the next scoreline was 2-1 to Bournemouth and it was Tunbridge Fan TV and Liam Gaming too who said they'd expect that scoreline to be the result at full time and Liam said that he would expect Jack Wilshere to get a double and Lee Gregory to score for us he ended with meow there was one more person who thought that the Cherries would go on to beat us and that person was Red Army TV Vlogs and he said that the score would end 2-0 to Bournemouth. Now onto the score lines that favoured the FA Cup magic and the ones that thought that there would be a decent upset. We'll start with the scoreline of 1-0 which was predicted by Ronnie Temple and Joe Holloway. Joe said that if it went to penalties then Bournemouth would win. Can I just say, because I, I do know Joe, in the FA Cup if it's a draw it goes to a replay mate. I think he knows that but he just put that down at time. Now after the match he said come on 3-0 never doubted us for a second. There was one more person who thought the game would end in a draw and that person was Joe Conway. He thought it would end two apiece between the two sides there. However, there was two people that said that Millwall would win in their predictions and they were Elite She and It's Hardcore. It's Hardcore thought that the Lions would win 2-1 and Elite She thought that we'd win 3-2 with Ben Thompson getting the late winner. Now let's move into your comments for this week and we're going to start with Red Army TV Vlogs' comment and he said, we want Aiden O'Brien, he's been linked with us. That was obviously in response to my story last week about Aiden O'Brien being linked with a bunch of championship sides for 750 K. And all I've got to say today is I hope you don't get him. Honestly, he's a fantastic player. He's become so key at the den and playing for us. So I would really sincerely say, please don't sign him. The next person to comment was Joe Holloway. And he said, do we need a promise free kick taker as Warren Williams don't look as confident on them? My response to that is Fergie's good at them, but I get what you mean by saying that you don't think that anyone's going to be getting them top bins anytime soon. Well, in my opinion, this is actually just something interesting that I want to throw out there. Why don't we try and Fred and Aiden to do them. They're both basically first team players now and well it'd be a great idea to develop them in that certain area of the field because you know what it'd be so good for them to have just an extra thing in their game. I mean Fred was fantastic against Bournemouth and Aiden's been one of our star players this season. The next person to say something was Ray Narration and he commented with two things. The first being do you think any areas of the squad need to be improved? And well after the defence sword in itself
yourself out, got to be honest. No, not really, because we have a good squad. I'd say maybe a striker that is a proven goal scorer, but Morrison and Gregory seem to be doing well with scoring. Plus, Aiden O'Brien's got a lot of goals as well this season. The second thing that he said was, if you could bring in one decent young player on loan, who would you like? Now, if it was down to me to get a young, decent player on loan, then I'd have to go for Josh Anoma off of Tottenham Hotspur. We like to get players off of Spurs, so this one would make sense. Plus, it's another name that we could have in the centre of midfield. Now, before you say anything, I know he can play as a cam, really, instead of a centre midfielder, but he's played eight times for Tottenham this season and scored in one of those. He can also play on both wings, so that's just a different dynamic to the game, and he looks pretty good, so be something nice to see if he come down to the dead. Probably never going to happen, but you know what? Just putting it out there. The next person to comment was Liam Gaming 2, and he is still Liam Gaming, as this is his new account. I'll cover more about that after his comments. The first one that he said was, do you think Warren needs more game time? And to that I say, yes, I think he does, but the team is working so well. So David is a fantastic professional player. And I'm going to be honest, he'll understand when a team plays so well, it's hard to get him in that team and start him. He'll know that he'll have to settle for coming off the bench. But to be fair to Neil Harris and the way he works, he has brought on David Wall a lot and he brings him on at quite a decent time as well. He gets a decent chunk of playing time and David Wall does make the difference when he comes off the bench. The next thing that Liam said was, do you think Ford will come back? And to this one, I reckon he will, but you'll be surprised in the way that I reckon he will come back. Instead of being in goal for us, because we've already got Archer, I think that he'll come back in a very different way. As Jordan Archer and the Millwall coaching staff have said that David Ford is a huge presence and is very good at coaching. And because he's so good at teaching and he likes his books, I reckon that David Ford will return as a goalkeeper coach to the den. That being said, if he does return off of his loan and stay with us, then he might just get his coaching badges with us and then end his career with us and go into that. Liam followed up the question with, do you think we need a new goalkeeper? And well, if Ford leaves, we may need a new backup keeper. But that being said, King isn't the worst goalkeeper in the world. His growth would be stopped if we brought in another goalkeeper. So the way that Harris works would mean that I think it'd be better to see how Tom King turns out. And to be honest, in the games that he's played, he hasn't been the worst goalkeeper I've ever seen. He looks pretty good. Obviously, he's going to make mistakes. He's a young goalkeeper. Let's just bear that in mind. His next question was, do you think we need a new midfielder? To be honest, I don't think we need a new midfielder but that does depend on Ben Thompson not getting too many yellow cards and all of our midfielders staying fit. The final question is, do you think Morrison will retire soon? And in my opinion, I doubt he will because to be honest, if you look at it, he's scoring lots of goals. And another reason would be that I would say no is because he's just gone and said he's going for his coaching badges and he's probably going to complete them before he ends his time at the Den. He's a great role model to have at the club. And I'm going to be honest, the amount of experience that he can actually just pass on to those youth players, I think it's still worthwhile having him around even if he wasn't be playing all the time. Liam finished with two songs. The first one was super, super nil, super, super nil, super, super nil, super nil, Harris. And the second one was Gregory, Gregory, Lee Gregory, Lee Gregory. Now on to a new and potentially permanent section depending on how you want to take it. And this section is the shout out special section. Now this section is just been born because two of you wanted me to shout you guys out and so I thought I'd do that because it's just nice to shout people out and I think they just help other people out they're creating content especially if you're watching my videos and you like Millwall Football Club I think that's an even better reason so from next week I will be doing one person sometimes two though but it would depend on whether you guys want to see it and what I want to get you guys to do is if you do want me to shout you out next time just talk about your content so the viewers of my channel can understand what your channel is about because what I'll do is I'll just say a little bit about it now the first person that I'm going to be shouting out today is Liam Gaming 2 earlier I told you that Liam Gaming was obviously got a new account and he had to create a second account to make videos on and that is his new channel. Now I've had a look at his channel and he has done an update video and he's also done one recording on Pez where he plays his Arsenal Football Club in the Champions League. So go sub to him and help him grow. His channel hasn't been created long so he needs all the support he can get to grow. The second person to ask for a shout out is the VeggieTube and I've had a look at his channel as well and he has a recent vlog of the Bournemouth game which is something I really wanted to do. So I really sincerely hope you guys go check that video out drop it a like and go watch some of his videos in terms of the content he creates he does prediction videos he also does analysis videos but much smaller to the ones that I do which is pretty nice because I know I go on for a fair bit so go drop him a sub and help him out see how far his channel can grow 
Onto the loan watcher, Mill will have eight players out on loan. They all featured for their sides while they were playing this week. And so we're going to start with the younger players and then move on to the more senior loaned out players. And we're going to start with Torquay United, where Paul Rooney's Torquay United side lost 1-0 to Boreham Wood. Rooney is still at Torquay due to having his loan extended for another 28 days, and Rooney played the full 90 minutes in that match. Next up is another player who is out on loan obviously it's the loan watch but this guy was someone that said he wanted to go out on loan a couple of weeks ago I covered it in my Millwall news and that's Chris Twaddock he's actually joined up with Braintree Town the team that we beat in the FA Cup and he did play for them in their 2-1 loss to Chester and he featured the full 90 minutes and also got an assist in that match so things are looking pretty good for Chris especially on his debut Rian Bray is the next player and the young defender played the full 90 minutes for Leatherhead FC when they played Barrow or Harrow Borough. The game actually ended 2-2 and Rian got a yellow card in that one. Next up is keeper Harry Gerlin, who's out on loan to Welling United and his side lost 2-0 when they played the full 90 minutes and he was also involved in a huge mix-up that led to the opponent's Hemel Hempstead's second goal. From one goalkeeper to another, we take a look at David Ford, who's out on loan to Portsmouth. His side lost 3-1 away to table toppers Doncaster United. David Ford played the full match and he played up against a former line in John Marquis who scored a double and will no doubt get the bragging rights in a game that ended with his side winning the match against his old teammate. Continuing on to League 2 and Sid Nelson played his first match for the bottom of the league side Newport County as they lost 3-1 to Stevenage. Nelson played the full 90 minutes and also got a yellow card. Wickham Wanderers is the next stop and of course that means we're talking about Paris Cohen Hall. He played 66 minutes for Wickham as he was subbed off for Paul Hayes during a time Paris was on on the pitch. He got a yellow card, but Wickham still did beat non-league side Sturbridge 2-1 in the end to progress to the fourth round of the FA Cup. And the final player in the loan watch is Greg Wilde. He started for Northampton as they lost 5-0 to Bristol Rovers in the end, and that was actually in the league. Wilde played 28 minutes before being subbed off at the time. Northampton were actually losing 4-0. What a crazy result, and wow, I hope that Greg Wilde's alright because he went there to get game time, and that, that really looks like he's already started off in the worst place possible I really hope he improves and I hope that he gets that game time sorted out because the Northampton boss was fuming and I mean to be honest he has a right to when they was conceded that many goals so early on onto the game that Mill played and it's safe to say it was much better than most of the results that our players out on loan in Jordan so as you may know well I would expect you to know to be honest unless you've been living under some sort of rock Mill played against Premier League opposition in AFC Bournemouth and with this game Neil Harris named an unchanged 11 as he does with most of his teams I'm going to be honest it was fully expected but Eddie Howe maintained a different approach as he went with changing the full 11 players that is the craziest thing I've ever seen and well most of his players hadn't really got that much game time and never really played together before so it was a really weird actual example of what Eddie Howe did there because I thought he's such a phenomenal manager but that did help the Lions win 3-0 it wasn't an easy task I'm gonna be honest we had the defense so much but we managed to do it in the end it's the best performance I think I've ever seen by Millwall ever I'm gonna be honest it was such a fantastic performance defensively we looked like a unrecognizable from the team that actually was pretty poor at the start of the season when defending the game started off badly for us as obviously Morrison missed the open goal but he did make up for it after scoring a header which was assisted by Sean Williams as he was the guy who put the corner in then Bournemouth missed a free header with Lyles must say somehow not guiding it into the back of the net but then we went and extended our lead as the ball was put in after Steve Morrison put it into Federici who made the save to be fair to him it was actually not a bad save but his parry just accidentally fell to the foot of Sean Cummins who claimed his first ever Millwall goal and to be honest from that point it only got better for Millwall as Bournemouth put the ball in the back of the net and it was ruled offside and then in the last minute of added time Shane Ferguson grabbed a goal after being played through by David Worrell which finished off a great counter-attacking play. On to the player of the week and well to be honest it isn't really a player of the week as we only played one match but more so a man of the match against Bournemouth and so for that reason I've given it to Fred. He was absolutely outstanding standing winning the ball back on so many occasions I'm gonna be honest Fred has never played like that I've never seen him play like that before and that really shows that he's got some talent he just needs to play like that every week could you imagine he also dribbled past the Bournemouth team like they just weren't there I know some of their players are inexperienced but my word what an amazing dribble he went to give that ball to Lee Gregory shame Gregory didn't finish off the pass and well he's just proven to have grown to be a great individual after he's got so much football for Millwall we've got to get that contract signed with him that's my biggest worry 
Murray. He's not going to go ahead and sign it now and he wants to go on to bigger things. I mean, to be honest, after that performance, I'd say that he could go on to do bigger things. He's a phenomenal player. Hopefully, we can get promoted and he'll stay with us. Now, it's that time for the final section of the podcast. Yes, that's right. It's time for the Millwall news. And our first story comes from Neil Harris. As he said, the reason he loaned out Sid Nelson to bottom of the league, Newport County, is so that 21-year-old could get a good run of games because he needs to grow in terms of his physicality and maturity. But that does mean with Sid Nelson going out that he'll be in a relegation dogfight. So you know that it's going to be testing for Sid. But to be honest, in my opinion, I think that's much better. And I think that's correct decision that Neil Harris has done with that one. The second story comes from Mill skipper Tony Craig. He commented on Bournemouth and his thoughts on their rise to fame. Craig said what Bournemouth did was outstanding as they had a very little budget and it shows that the heart of football can get you to places in football. Their manager, Eddie Howe, is a great manager and he has managed in a lot of the leagues with Bournemouth and he has a really good group of individuals. The next story comes from a Lewisham councillor saying that in the past five years he has seen renewals plans slowly but surely fall apart as he said they were going to do some things it hasn't worked out and we want what's in best interest of the local community and Millwall Football Club. This obviously comes after the revelation that Millwall might have to relocate due to them needing their academy status that they've currently got. The final two stories are both from Millwall manager Neil Harris so I'm going to bond them together and the first part of this is Neil Harris said he has to make sure his team continues to improve because the lowest in the league he wants to finish is the top six and they must not fall any lower once they get there. He really wants to have success this season despite obviously last season crashing out in the playoff final. He wants to do one better than that. He wants to really really get closer and closer because he knows he has to make that progression. The second part to what Neil Harris said was about the Bournemouth result and he said it's not as good as what it could have been. They've been doing extra training sessions each day to get the message across and make sure that they were mentally and physically prepared for this strong team but overall they did what they do every week so he saw no change from that and he said about the extra training he said it weren't that they just weren't getting it it's just they needed to make sure they was continuously doing it. So that is all we got time for for today at least. Do feel free to put your questions and opinions in the comments section for the next Talk the Wall. However before I go don't forget to put your score predictions for that huge derby game to Charlton at the Valley in the comments section as next week I'll be covering the game and highlighting the good and bad points. While you're down there don't forget to tell me your opinions of that match and Millwall as a whole. So like, comment, subscribe and of course I will see you guys next week for the next Talk the Wall. But until then goodbye. 